Um, Rabbi uh, Brian Mayer, Mayer, of course, was just on. Um, I just found this on his Facebook book page. The world exists on three things. This is actually, a, a, I believe, a quote maybe from the Talmud. Um, truth, justice, and peace. And uh, that word for peace there in, in Hebrew is shalom. And shalom doesn't just simply mean like being calm for yourself um, or even just being peaceful yourself. It means uh, a state of being in which uh, you not only um, are peaceful, but those around you are, are, are feeling a sense of well-being, not just peace like calm, but a sense of well-being, health, vitality, and those around you. So this sense of peace necessarily uh, requires uh, also the peace and well-being of others as well. Now, in terms of the peace that Jesus talks about, I, I want to throw up an example here and ask, ask you for a response um, here. Let's say that one day uh, you uh, trip on the pavement and you just go splat on the ground and it, you're hurt, uh, you're, you're frustrated, and you look back and you discover the reason why you tripped, it's because somebody just maliciously stuck out their leg when you weren't watching and intentionally tripped you. Okay, now think about how you feel upon this discovery. Your, your leg is bleeding, your head is bleeding, you're in pain, and this person intentionally tried to get you to trip. Now think about your feelings and how long it would take you to get over those feelings. All right, now let's run the same scenario You've tripped and fallen on the pavement, same injuries, your leg is bleeding, your head is bleeding, but you discover the reason why you tripped was because you accidentally uh, um, uh, 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 tripped over a homeless woman who was, who was laying in the, in the on, who was just simply on the, on the pavement and you weren't paying attention, you tripped over her. You know, now, how are you feeling? You know, are you feeling angry and upset? You know, well, maybe at yourself, a bit, but not at, a, at another person. Interestingly, though, the injuries are the same, right? You've, your head is bleeding, your, 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 your leg is bleeding, you're in pain, and yet your emotions are extremely diff, uh, different depending upon what you think caused your stumble. So we actually have an ability to, like, think about that first scenario. You think, I have no ability to calm down. Like, this person has intentionally hurt me. It might be years before you actually get over that, right? And yet, it had just been caused through different means, you would have been perfectly calm about it and later forgotten. So we have a, an ability to control our emotions in some way, which I think is important. God does not hold our sins uh, against us. It's we who hold our sins against us and others. And when I take that, like, literally to be true, if I believe that God has loves me so much that God would, would, would look beyond all the crap I've done in my life, I get really, really grateful and really, really happy. Like if, that, if, if, the, if, if God just zeroes that out, when I turn to God, just zeroes that out, it's like, wow, I mean, I certainly don't have that kind of love. Um, but I also realize the extent to which I've been forgiven is huge. And so now I'm invited to look at my neighbors and those who have sinned against me. You know, maybe somebody did trip me up and cause me to fall. What about that person? What, if, what am I to do about the person who you know, maybe caused me to you know, take, take a dive there? Well, if I believe that I have been forgiven of every sin I've ever committed, uh, and that that's not to stand in the, it, I don't, it does not stand in, in, in the way, in, in between myself and, and God's love for me. It doesn't make my sins okay. It doesn't mean that God approves of everything I did. It just means that God does not condemn me for every, all these things. Well, then when I look at the person who tripped me, I think about, okay, they hurt me in a real way, but I think about, but, that's, but the extent to which they hurt me is confined to that incident. Whereas if I look at all of my, the ways I've hurt others over the course of a lifetime, that's way more than that one incident. So if I've been forgiven for it all, then I also, I may not approve of the person who caused me to fall, who intentionally made me fall, but I'm not going to condemn them. I'm not going to use all that pent-up emotion to try to seek vengeance upon them because I'm aware of my own forgiveness. 
And so not only have I made it peace in terms of my relationship with God, I'm also made at peace with relationship to my fellow human being. That there's literally nothing that somebody could do in, as an individual to me that would outweigh what I've already been forgiven for. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to approve of their action. It doesn't mean that I'm going to want to become their best friends. I may want not have anything to do with them in their life, but I'm going to let go of the judgment and the condemnation that I would have felt had I just felt like they just have done me this outrageous wrong and I, I couldn't possibly do anything like that. To me, that's the peace that comes that he's talking about. The peace that the world does not give is the peace that uh, is offered to us. If we'll simply accept and, and take Jesus' life, death, and resurrection as kind of a, an indicator, us building a story that, that tells us something true about God, that we are forgiven. And if we'll really accept that into our lives, it will bring great peace to us. It rids us of shame and guilt, inspires us to want to be better people, not worse, and also uh, reminds us to go and forgive others as we would forgive ourselves, which gives great peace. As we're reminded in John 20, the very gospel we got this from, when Jesus is first resurrected, he says, peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a breath and breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. If you forgive someone's sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? You know, the only one hanging on to sins is us. Jesus invites us to let go of our sins, let go of the sins of others in terms of condemnation, not in terms of like wanting to do better people, but in terms of condemnation. And that brings not just peace and, as calmness, but peace as, as shalom, a peace that makes not only my life better, but hopefully yours as well.